The Otter family might have fooled some of you simpletons into believing that they are these cute and family-friendly creatures, but this sentiment couldn't be further from the truth. Some of the war crimes committed by these otters are quite literally unspeakable here on YouTube. So when we eventually get around to some of the darker sides of this otter world, I really have to get creative with my vocabulary. But today we shall take it even one step further, as we shall also explore some of their even more monstrous prehistoric additions, which might have even feasted on early humans. Now, the otter family have been quite busy the last million years indeed, consisting of over 13 different types, and they have almost conquered every part of the world, except Antarctica and Australia. Another very important piece of information regarding their crackhead potential is the fact that they are part of the mustelid family, which probably doesn't need any introduction. But if you need a little reminder, the otters basically share blood with the likes of the ball-biting honey badger and the wolverine which should be more than enough to give you an idea of how much of a menace this family is. Now, the biggest modern version we currently have is the giant river otter, also known as the river mafia. This absolute cracked up gangster is actually the fourth biggest otter of all time. It measures six feet or 1.8 meters in length and can weigh as much as 77 pounds or 35 kilograms. Now, luckily for you and me, they live in extremely remote parts of the Amazon jungle. They share this habitat with several life-canceling machines like jaguars, crocodiles, anacondas and countless parasites, which is part of the reason why they have evolved into such powerful creatures. There is one specific aspect of their way of life that makes them an unstoppable force of nature, and that's the fact that they live and travel in large packs of up to 20 members. Even jaguars, which normally would be considered an apex predator in their domain, do not mess with them. And if they do, they will quickly get a brutal reality check, creating a core memory indeed. Now, after hearing all of this relentless slander I'm giving the otter family, you might ask me, what about sea otters? They are simply the cutest. They even hold hands during rough weather and are featured in several Disney movies. Surely they can't be all that bad, right? Well, you better sit down for the following statements I'm about to unleash, as the sea otter is way freakier than the giant river otters could ever dream about achieving. This is also the part where I have to get real creative with my way of words. You see, the otters of the sea have some rather interesting tastes when it comes to their hormone activities. I'll make this a bit easier for you. So here's a baby seal, and here's a sea otter. And sometimes, some lonely sea otters will conquer these seal cubs in a not-so-family-friendly way, if you know what I mean. Anyways, if you still don't get it, just search it up on Google. But I'm warning you, the results might be a bit more unpleasant than how I explained it here. Now, for the remainder of this video, we shall switch our focus over to the Otter family's even more sinister past. What makes the Otter family especially fascinating is that their family bloodline stretches back more than 20 million years. Now, their earliest ancestors were rather puny creatures that evolved from other smaller terrestrial carnivores. This cute fella, known as a Potomotherium, is a good example. They were a lot smaller, almost the size of weasels. Other than that, they were pretty much normal otters. But there are three absolute beasts that also lived around this same time period, and they were nothing like any otters you have ever seen or heard of. I will be covering each of them, starting with the smallest and ending with the largest otter to ever exist. First up, we have the Megalenhydris barbaricina, and again, I have to send my apologies for the rather obscure AI pictures in this segment, as this goddamn skull is pretty much all we have to show for when it comes to this specific otter species. Anyways, with a length of 2 meters or 6.6 .6 feet, and a weight of around 45 kilograms or 90 pounds, this specimen was actually not that far off from the modern giant river otter in terms of size. In addition to their similar size, both of them are, or in this case were, specifically adapted for freshwater habitats. But unlike the giant river otters, which primarily gobble on fish and other soft prey items, the Megalonhydris is thought to have exceptionally strong jaws, suggesting that it had a diet more similar to sea otters, which includes tougher prey like shells and mollusks. The Megalonhydris is also a rather young species, as it lived only around 2 million years ago during the Pleistocene epoch in Sardinia, Italy. And unlike the other otters we are going to look at soon, this one lived a rather chill life, as it did not face many predators on this remote island during that time. Next up, we've got the absolute freak of nature known as Siamagal melilutra. 
And again, this otter shared many similarities with the cracked up giant river otter. But with a weight of over 50 kilograms or 110 pounds and a length of up to 2.4 meters or 7.8 feet, it is the second largest otter to ever roam our planet. The Melilutra is also especially infamous for its extremely strong bite force. Like the Megalonhydris, it is thought to have eaten mostly hard-shelled prey like mollusks. But the bite force of this creature was just unholy compared to any other otter species. The secret to its insane bite force lies in its skull and jaw structure, which revealed that it had been on an ungodly long mewing streak indeed. Its cheekbone structure was unnaturally large compared to any other otter skull, which would have supported massive jaw muscles, supercharging its bite force. It also lived a semi-aquatic lifestyle, as it lived mostly in freshwater wetlands in China around six million years ago. One thing that makes the Melilutra even more badass is the fact that during its time period and area of habitat, it would have had to compete against several monstrous predators like saber-toothed cats, prehistoric bears, and goddamn crocodiles. This harsh competition could be part of the reason why it grew to such large sizes, and also why it would need such powerful jaws in the first place. Now, before I introduce you to the largest and most powerful otter to ever exist, please do consider leaving the video a like and maybe even subscribing, as this is yet another expensive video to make, so everything that helps push it forward would be great. Anyways, let me present to you the Enhydriodon omoensis. This specimen lived in Africa around three to five million years ago, and it was so large that it was more bear-like than an actual otter. It weighed a whopping 200 kilograms or 440 pounds, but it was not really that long, as it measured around 2.5 meters or 8.2 feet, which gave it an extremely tanky build. This also makes it the largest mustelid, both on land and water, to ever exist, even beating the Megalictus, which is the prehistoric relative of the Wolverine. But what sets this otter apart from any other otter is the fact that its fossils suggest that it was mostly a terrestrial hunter, even outcompeting other large land-based predators. And if you know anything about Africa during this time period, you would know that the creatures living there at that time were on some demon-type shit. They, for example, had to deal with 2,000-pound crocodiles, infamous saber-tooth, giant bone-crushing hyenas, and giant bear-like creatures like the Agriotherium. Now, another incredibly sinister fact about this otter and its time period is that it would most likely have had run-ins with early humans. And these humans were a lot smaller than today's standards, as the afarensis were incredibly short kings, standing at 1.5 meters or 5 feet. So the Enhydriodon would have basically been a goddamn bear compared to them. Now, if you enjoyed today's video, then I'm sure you'll also enjoy my previous video, which covered the infamous Wolverine and its brutal prehistoric cousin. Anyways, the next video will probably cover orcas and some of their prehistoric counterparts, which also were absolute demons in their own right.